In a bright nursery hung with pictures, the table was laid for tea. Upon an iron tray, which had seen much service, even military service as a drum used by the nursery band, stood the tea set. This set included a very large cup which belonged to Nurse, bearing the funny inscription, I am not greedy, but I like a lot. The other cups were also lettered in gold. One hailed, it declared, From Margate, and showed the pier as proof. Another, a small one made of porcelain, wished many happy returns to Effie every time she looked at it. A thick, fat cup proclaimed itself a present to Daniel, and a mug bore the perpetual reminder that it was for a good boy, but it was cracked so it didn't look quite happy, perhaps because the reminder was not always capable of keeping the boy good. The kettle completed the party, but sat comfortably on the warm hob next to the fire, drowsily singing snatches of song in the knowledge of having done his duty in giving the thirsty teapot a drink of water. So all was ready for tea except the children. Nurse had gone to collect them when the Chinese teapot, who always liked to appear important, suddenly exclaimed, what a noise that kettle is making, to be sure. One could scarcely hear oneself rattle if one wanted to. The kettle, ignoring the protest, sang on. Just now we were quiet. No noise and no riot. You could hear a bread plate drop. Flop. We used to have a very nice English teapot once, remarked the porcelain cup. I remember replied her neighbor from Margate. He came from Worcester. He was a big pot and thought himself no end of a swell. What, kettle time already? exclaimed the tongs, yawning and stretching his legs. A nice sort of life it is for one of my grade and standing, grumbled the teapot, to be surrounded by such a set of ugly foreign mugs and things as you all are. There was a general rattling of displeasure at the insult, but it was drowned by the kettle, who could see a joke singing up merrily, If there's a fuss, if a pot should elude, as a mug to a china cup, there's always a clatter of jug, plate, and platter till somebody washes them up. It's disgraceful to go on like this, complained the milk jug, looking rather broken down about the handle. Ah, said the teapot with a sneer, when one only dates from 1887 and hasn't a handle to one's back, one should retire to the seclusion of the cupboard and remain there as a curio. There was once a jubilee juggins, jug, jug, juggins, hummed the kettle. Poor old crock, said the sugar basin sweetly, melting with pity through all her composition for she was his inseparable companion and knew that the milk jug was full of human kindness and useful still. The kettle took up the idea and sang gaily, To go, he did nothing but stop. You ought to have a will of iron if you're made of the right stuff, she continued, addressing the tray. You ought to keep order, but you say nothing and do less. You see, he's only a waiter, slow and unpolished, added the teapot spitefully. And rivets, cement, and a fee. You're always brewing mischief, said Nurse's Cup angrily to the teapot. There'll be no peace for any of us where you are. That's true, screamed out the little tea leaves inside the pot. He's always getting us into hot water. I'll draw the tannin out of the whole ounce of you. You're about as sensible as mortals who haven't the wit to understand us. 
was shivered to bits by a blow. The teapot went on. Those people are amusing too. They think we ought to last forever when they can't even do it themselves. A couple of chatterpots! Exclaimed the nurse's cup. Dear you, indeed! Returned the teapot. Cheap you! Why you were given away with a pound of tea? Shouldn't be surprised at all. He continued, watching nurse's cup become speechless with indignation. But spouting aside, I can tell you a thing or two. All three, all four, all five, all. The kettle might have sung on into billions had he not begun to choke over it and splutter and gurgle. Then he grew vexed and snorted and got angrier and angrier until finally, in order to breathe more easily, he knocked his lid on one side and began to boil with rage. Ha ha! Laughed the teapot mockingly. The old fellow's getting his steam up. Pray don't derange yourself, sir, on our account. Ha <laughs> ha! He's getting water on his knob. This didn't seem to comfort the kettle much. What do you think about it, spoonies? Added the teapot. But the spoons heeded him not. They were conversing quietly in couples and didn't care to be drawn into argument. So he turned his attention elsewhere, bent on brewing discord. People are so thoughtless, he complained, turning a cold shoulder to the others. Muggins, my boy, I'm beginning to get quite chilly. Just go and fetch my cozy coat. He knew this was an impossibility, and he only said it in order to pick a quarrel. But noticing a distant plate who was openly laughing at him, he cuttingly remarked, "Seen the plumber lately?" Now the plate happened to be suffering severely from rivets, an infirmity which she vainly tried to hide, and which she hated to be noticed. So, getting no reply, he added, "I presume that your plumbago is better." The kettle was now puffing and spitting to such a degree that it was difficult to imagine he was the same jolly fellow who had been singing so good-temperedly all the time. "Bless those boys!" cried Nurse as she replaced her apron. Said Bob, tilting back his chair, then suddenly steadying himself by grasping the table. This was a troublesome habit of his, which drew Nurse's usual reminder. What's his name? Asked the others eagerly. I know it's a secret," replied Bob mysteriously. At this, a loud argument began. My lid! Pray don't upset your precious selves. I think it must be Mister Manners who is the stranger," exclaimed Nurse, putting her hands to her ears to shut out the tumult. No, and he laughed triumphantly as the other children raised their voices to declare it was very unfair. Bob swung back on his chair again. Oh! Screamed Nurse in a fright, making a grab at the table, and the crockery lay around all broken to atoms. In the moment of hushed alarm that followed, the tray rolled away, exclaiming in triumph, "I've got rid of them at last!" And the kettle, gazing at the wreckage, sang on serenely and merrily. There's been such a fuss, such a storm has been brewed. There's no cups for the tea and no plates for the food. The cleverest doctor may puzzle his wits. But he can never gather and rivet the bits. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel to see the latest videos. Thank you.